Alright, we are back with more Toronto Blue Jays franchise. And we are ten and a half back of the Yankees now. And as you can see here, our month of August has not gone too well. Uh, 4 at 11. And I'm not sure if the uh, injury to Alec Manoa near the end of the last episode uh, has anything to do with that. Like, I honestly know. But. Well, let's see. Oh. Well, Chapman's been doing pretty well this this year, but I'm going to wait till like, we get to the off-season to uh, worry about any more extensions. Anyway, we are taking on the Cincinnati Reds as our featured game today. We are 65 and 57. The Cincinnati Reds are 51 and 72. So, let's get into this. And I think we're going to change things up a bit. We'll go over our 1992 road unis today. Alright, and there's our former Blue Jays, San Diego Espinal and Brandon Belt there in the Cincinnati lineup. Espinal is uh, batting leadoff for them, and Brandon Belt is batting in the four hole. So let's see how this goes. Hello baseball fans and welcome Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Toronto Blue Jays going up against the Cincinnati Reds. Joined by my partner Chris Singleton, I'm John Chompy. Well, Singy, when you consider the top hitters ballparks in the sport, this has got to be one of them. I'll say this. Pitchers have to stay with their game. They can't look over their shoulder and think, I have to be fine and perfect on every pitch. Continue to pitch to your strengths, and you'll come out of here with a good outing. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. So there's Eric Lauer on the mound for the Cincinnati Reds. So I'm guessing that the Reds probably traded for him. He hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. Every player wants to perform well at their home ball. All right, there we go. We have a leadoff single to start off. And you know this guy no different. He wants to be more effective here. So, you know, you look at the numbers. They haven't been great at home. I'm sure he wants to turn that around, and we'll see if he's able to start that in this one. Can it pitch you off to the plate? And that is going to be a stolen base. We'll see. That's a stolen base. Yeah, the throw, I think, bounced in the second there. Additional leadoff hitter. Gets on base to start the game. Himself on second with a nice stolen bag. I think that sets the tone for the offense for sure. Swing and a ball popped up, and it falls. And that's going to be an RBI knock for Kevin Biggio. We had an early one to nothing lead in Cincinnati. Well, does a great job of letting that runner steal second base, get in the scoring position, come through with the base knock. You had a run. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. Ground ball left side could be two. Oh, that was a double play ball, but uh, Brandon Belton cannot hang on, cannot field it cleanly. Here's Matt Chapman, Matt. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. The pitch. Swing and a pop-up. Marte moving under this one. And that'll be out number two. Makes the catch for the out. George Springer to step to the plate. Another solid power season. Ball to strike. The pitch. And strike two. Goes down low. And we go to the bottom of the first. But the RBI single pushes across a run. And the hole. Back here at Great American Ballpark, getting the nod in this 12 and 5, 2.6 ERA for Bassett on this season. He's definitely been the one positive uh, this season here in the rotation. I mean, we're probably not going to catch New York for the division, but... Good news though is that we have a wild card spot, so we can at least play for that. Guerrero puts it away for the out. And there's one down. And now 
challenge Garrett Cooper up to him. Bounce to the left side. Chapman over to first in time. Here tonight, an efficient start to the home. First two away. Two outs, bases at lead. And now the catcher comes up to him. Tyler Stevenson. And that is going to be a foul ball as Springer dives, but cannot get it. Ground ball hit to Bichette. On the first, and we will head to the second inning. Yeah, we all like Bichette's uh, defense is still terrible. Three errors committed already forming the first ten games of the uh, season. At least first ten games as of recording this episode. But offensively, though, he's been very good. All right, let's see how Votto does in his first at bat back in Cincinnati since we traded for him. And he is going to ground out the short for the second out. Alright, so that's single for Bichette. Against the wall with two strikes, but found a way. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. And Kurt's good ground at the second to end the inning. Fires over to first, and that is that. And welcome back. Bottom of the inning. Now the Reds cleanup hitter, Brandon Bell. And that one fouled off. Brandon Bell, who grew up in Texas, played his college ball at the University of Texas, and then went on to win World Series with the Giants in 2012 and 2014. They called him the captain for a couple of years. Yeah, well, I remember Bruce. Ground ball to second base. Nice sliding stop. It. Oh. Biggio is sliding to try to get the ball, but he couldn't quite field it cleanly, and Belt is ruled safe at first. Let's have a look. Uh, he is indeed safe there by about half a step. So we are not going to challenge that, and Belt is aboard at first base safely. And that is caught by Springer. That is going to be a catch to down. <laughs> Although Varsho and the you'd almost collide with each other there. That would not have been good. Alright, TJ Friel. I'm actually curious to see how they scored that play involving Brandon Bell. Like whether it's an error or a hit or something, I guess we'll find out right now as we get the final out there. They scored it a hit. Okay. Back here in Cincinnati. New inning getting started. Here's a speed threat. Number 35. Comes up empty. That's strike two. That's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on. And see if you can get a stolen base. Maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. Got him. Lead off hitter gone to the third. Tell you what, those are the types of guys pitchers really like to punch out when they're on the mound because 
because if they get on, just the distraction that they create with all that speed over on the base pass, it can take away your focus from the next hitter, and that's the last thing you want to do is serve up a pitch that a guy hits over the fence, and it's a multi-run home run. Here comes a pitch. On the ground, right side. And we go to the bottom of the third inning. Down in order. Set for the bottom of the third. In now for the Reds. Nick Plummer. Right hander kicks deals. Got him. And one out now. Really tight by on that slider. Just couldn't get the barrel to it out front. You've got to try to pull those hands tight to the body to get it through. And I'm thinking he probably wanted that pitch to end up even more inside to keep it out of the danger zone. But they had enough late break and deception to get the job done. Biggio sends it to first. And that quickly, two away. Got him swinging. And we go to the fourth inning. Reds good. Back here at the ballpark, John Choppy with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Matt Chapman. He's been pitching well, but going through this middle of the order second time through, we'll see what kind of adjustments are to made. Hard hit, right side. Sends it to first. One up, one down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Chris, one of the things that's really cool about George Springer's story is what he has overcome. As a kid, he had a lot of anxiety, and he had a stutter. And, and, and that's going to be into the gap of the extra bases for Springer. And that is lined right to short, and that will end the fourth, the top of the fourth inning. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Now it's the Reds' DH, Garrett Cooper. High fly ball, right field. Biggio pulls it in for the out. One up, one down. Now that's a tough play for the infielder ranging back into the outfield. There's part of him that's saying, hey, where are you at, outfielder? Call me off. He stayed focused and made a nice catch right there. Kicks and fires. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front no, there. Just needs to learn to travel a little more, and his timing right. will be back on track. Good pitch no. for the strikeout. That one is and that is crushed to center. That is caught in front of the wall. We go to the fifth inning. And that is going to be extra bases for Bo Bichette. And safely, it's a double and his second hit. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. And the batter now, Alejandro Kirk. Swings through that. The grab one away. Back to the leadoff spot in the Blue Jays lineup. And next for Toronto, number 35. Single and scored back to the first. He's one for two. But can I not get a run? No, not there. But we do move the runner to third. Kevin Biggio with a chance to hit. One for two. He had an RBI base hit back to the first. 
Well, that's going to be an RBI knock for Biggio, and it is two to nothing. Catcher has it, and that does it for the Blue Jays in the fifth inning. A two to nothing lead going in the bottom of the frame. Popped up, and we go to the sixth inning. And there's a hit for Springer. That's his second game. That is going to be a double play as Springer gets tagged. Oh, no, never mind. Varsho beat out the throw back to first. So that's going to end up being a fielder's choice. All right, so that is going to enable Joey Votto to come to the plate here at the top of the sixth with a runner on and two out. Strike three, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Down ball to Bo Bichette. Two down. So the batting order turns over. In now for the Reds. Santiago Espinal. Good contact guy, good defender. Oh, he's got to be pretty proud of this outing so far. Sometimes guys cower coming into a ballpark like this, but he is attack hitters. This has popped up. And we will go into the seventh inning. And Graham Ashcraft is going to come into the game. 121 2 first innings pitch for Ashcraft. 5 12, 5 6 2 ERA. So six solid innings for Eric Lauer. Two runs given up on seven hits. Not too bad of an outing for him. And Bichette is now free for free in this game. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already is bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more... And now Alejandro Kirk will base it. Bichette will move up to second. That's going to go foul. And he it in 
All right, forget that. And swing and a miss. All right, Vigio, two for free in this game. Well, make that three for four. That's going to be extra bases. And that brings home our third run. Kirk will stop at third. And it's now a three to nothing. Blue Jays advantage. And they're going to put a Guerrero on intentionally, it looks like. And that will drop in. Two runs will score. It is now 5 nothing. And that's going to do it for Ashcraft. Owen White will make his way into the ball game. His 11th appearance, 19 in the third innings, 3-1 record, but a DRA just over 6. And we will go to the bottom of the seventh. Set for the last half of the seventh. Now here is in the air, fairly deep to right field. One down. And there's one down. Here's the Reds catcher, Tyler Stevenson. They say it went. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Oh, nothing too fancy on the strikeout pitch right there. Just a low 90s fastball, and I'm not sure he was trying to challenge him, but that's pretty much what happened. Very hittable look. And that is crushed. And Brandon Belt has homered against us. It is now 5-1. to one. Ground ball, and we will head to the eighth inning. 5 1 lead down for the Blue Jays after the Brandon Belt homer. But they're on the board here in the late going. It's now 5 1. This is Toronto. We go to the eighth. Now it's the DH. Righty delivers. Check swing, but he went too far. One and two. Next pitch is popped up. And Votto is now going to be 0 for 4. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. Now there's one away. Bobichet next up for the Blue Jays. And Bo Bichette is going to be four for four this game. Let's go. Put Cameron Eden into the game. And, 
And that drops for an RBI knock. At least it should be, but Bichette is thrown out at the plate, and it will be 5-1 to one going in the bottom of the 8th. All right, Bassett's still going here as we start the bottom of the eighth. And there's a base knock for Noelvi Marte. this ball for a solo homer it is now six to one. I think we're going to take Bassett out of the game. Come back through the mound. Base hit. That was smoked through the infield. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. And the batter is George Springer. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Brother takes off. Pitch it for a strike. And, oh, that's a bad throw. Chapman's going to get in there. I think they would have gotten him if it was a perfect throw. And Chapman's going to tag and move up to third base. Diving stop. And it does not. They do not beat Varsho to the bag, so that's going to be an RBI hit for him. It's 7 to 1. Look at that. Nice diving stop at first. Oh, that looked like it was pretty close there at first. And now the DH. 
Oh, it was at the exact same time. So tie goes to the runner, I guess, in that case. So Votto's going to get one more chance to get a hit here, and he does. It's in the center field. And, gonna, and the Reds are going to send in Buck Farmer to try to get this last out. Which is Bo Bichette, and he has not gotten out at all in this game. Well, now that I've said that, he is uh, he flies out, so he is 4 for 5. But we've got a nice, comfortable 7 to 1 lead to work with here going into the bottom of the ninth inning. And Eric Swanson's going to be coming on, so... Bassett Day is indeed over. Eight innings, one run allowed. Very nice outing for him. He should get this win. Ground ball to Chapman. Two away. Red in their final strike belt. Ground ball to second. On to Guerrero at first. And that is your ball game. The Blue Jays take it 7 to 1. Yeah, we had lost five in a row going into this game. But that win uh, obviously puts an end to that. All right, look at that. A 7 to 1 victory over the Cincinnati Reds. All right, so I think for our next episode, we are going to go to Colorado and take on the Rockies. And uh, that happens to be uh, just Mr. Love's franchise team for this year. So, which is, which is kind, of a, which kind of one reason I want to play Colorado for the uh, next episode. And also, uh, because I want to see how well our hitters do at Coors Field. So, we will see you then, folks.